if we do not have enough magnesium and we do not have enough calcium and we do not have enough vitamin E, our nervous system cannot function. And it can be as simple as giving your body the nutrition it needs and your body will function well. That simple. Carrie, do you need a job as a nutritionist? Because I feel like, <laughs> I feel like you'd be a perfect nutritionist. Welcome to the Clear Skin Chronicles, the podcast that takes you on a journey to uncover the secrets of achieving glowing, acne-free skin. We believe that knowledge is power, and by understanding the root causes of acne, we can create a solid foundation for long-lasting clear skin. I'm Katie Stewart, registered holistic nutritionist and founder of the Clear Skin Solution, where we help women just like you get to the root cause of their acne. And I'm Chris Brown registered holistic nutritionist and program director inside the Clear Skin Solution. Through functional testing, we pinpoint where the body system imbalances lie so we can dive deep into the acne clearing journey. We work virtually with clients to clear up their skin from the inside out and have helped thousands of women worldwide regain their confidence. So Chris and I have been so looking forward to today's episode. We've been like kind of counting down the days, Carrie. We've been like pumped to get to chat with you. Uh, So today, obviously, if you're reading the title, you know that we have the amazing Carrie Kasem, who has had an incredible career, 26 years of experience as a radio show personality, co-hosting nationally syndicated um, iHeartRadio show, Six Sense with Nikki Six. And you recently launched your own skincare line, Faceem, which features an amazing product that both Chris and I have been loving, the Y. And it's just the most incredible anti-aging cream, you know, being a millennial myself, Chris, you know, being in, in, I'm not going to say her exact age, but being in her forties, we are both really all about anti-aging. So I love that. It's really great for tightening, plumping and all of the wonderful things when it comes to the skin. So Chris, what have you thought so far? I love the, so I carry profit. I am not a big skincare I probably should have started like two decades ago, maybe now, because now I'm concerned about it. (laughs) However, I've never been a big skincare. I opened it up and I was like trying. I love the texture. I do have a little problem, though. It smells like a creamsicle and I want to eat it. Oh, my gosh. It smells so yummy. It It smells so so delicious. Like, it's, it's great for the nose. It's great for the skin. I'm like, you're just teasing me. Oh, it's so funny. Many people have said that. They're like, it's, I want to eat it. It smells so good. <laughs> My husband tried to steal it. He's like, and he doesn't do skincare. He's like, oh, can I have that? That smells so Aww. amazing. And it is. It's for it's for men and women. So, you know, anybody can mm-hmm. use it. And it it does smell wonderful. And there's no fragrance in it. So I Which is amazing. Yeah. And it's it's just as clean as clean can be with the cleanest ingredients. Mm-hmm. And um yeah, I, I'm very proud of it. I love it. I'm 52. I've been using- We wouldn't all- guess. Yeah, well, good. You are definitely not guess. saying my age now. <laughs> Chris is hard like, there's no way. No. <laughs> That's hard, no. No. Um, yeah, no, 52. And I'm, I'm just, I've been using all the ingredients that are in this. I've been using since I was, I really started, I'd say- at 27 with all the machines and the lasers and the skin tightening. Mm -hmm. But at 24, I started using the vitamin C's and the moisturizing and the, you know, I, I'd say 24 is when I really started my foray into anti-aging and being 52, it has completely slowed my aging down. Everything I've done has slowed my aging down. So I'm very, very happy about that. Yeah. And like, I was kind of creeping your Instagram, of course, as we all do. And I saw that, you know, you like to live a healthy lifestyle, right? You know, you're in that healthy living world, Uh, obviously being a radio show personality, you're in that world of the media. So I would love to, you know, let's dig into a little bit about you and your story, because you mentioned before we started recording that you're no stranger to acne. You actually dealt with acne in your younger years. I did. I did. I had, um, I ate horribly. I was the worst. I was a vegan for 24 years. I'm still a a strict vegetarian, but I was vegan and I was eating the worst foods, tons of carbohydrates, sugars, everything. And I'm wondering why my skin doesn't look good. And I'm wondering Mm -hmm. why I'm breaking out, you know? And, um, I was also eating a lot of nuts and, uh, peanuts and I love peanuts. And I remember I had this great woman who would do my facials and she would go in and she put a little electricity on them and try and, you know, um, clear them up for me. And my, my cystic acne wouldn't pop, but she would put this 
kind of look like a, you know, those, those um, electric balls that you put your hand on and the electricity mm-hmm. goes, um, that's what Everywhere. it looked like. And she'd put it over my skin and it would get better. But she, one, one day she told me, so after a year of going to her and she was so sweet, she said, you know, a lot of people get this acne when they eat nuts and especially peanuts. So I stopped eating peanuts and I never got cystic acne again. To this day, I don't eat peanuts. You're and, like, that's um, it. Hardcore yeah, trauma. It. No more peanuts but, for me. That was it. And and peanut oil or anything with peanuts in mm-hmm. it, I do not eat. Now, I still got pimples. So I would break out and get these little pimples everywhere. And when I was doing TV and I had a show, it was terrible. It was just terrible. There's no, you know, filters, nothing. You could see my skin. My doctor then put me on Accutane, and mm. which I know is so bad for you. And I was on Accutane every other day, 10 milligrams. So I didn't get the very dry skin. I didn't flake. I didn't crack, but it did clear up my acne. And I was so happy because I could eat peanut butter again. I was so bad. I was just so like bad. So I was eating bad. I was a terrible vegetarian, vegan. And, uh, and through my health journey, cause I had Lyme disease for 11 years, mm-hmm. but yeah, through my health journey, I really, I got off all sugar. I've been off sugar over 15 years off of gluten, off of soy. Um, and now I'm off of the seed oils and processed food. I eat minimally and my skin is so much better for it. So much better mm-hmm. getting off of these horrific foods that I didn't even know. Being super healthy, people always thought I was crazy healthy. Now I'm saying no seed oils and people are like, what are you talking about? I'm like, no canola, no vegetable oil, no cotton seed, no soy. And I'm telling you, I don't, there is no filter on me. Mm-hmm. And Your skin's beautiful. Skin, yeah. And it looks better now at 52 than it did at in my twenties, I look it's better incredible. now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, you're preaching to the choir. Both Chris and I are like, scream it from the rooftops. The food that you're eating has such a direct impact on your skin. And, you know, you being in television, um, I have a similar story where I worked in, in major television for 14 yeah. years. I worked behind the scenes. I worked on camera. And when you're on an, a camera every single day, there, there are no Instagram filters where you can hide your breakouts. Sure, you can hide the redness, but that texture, the cakiness of television yep. makeup, and it really impacts you on not just the physical component, but such an a mentally emotional component as well. Yeah, no, it really does. And I mean, not just TV, but TV is terrible and it's embarrassing because everybody's everybody can see you and you're like, mm-hmm. more light here. Can you put more light here? Can I back up? Can I? Oh my gosh. It's different like, shots, Ooh. different angles. Can I part my hair this way? Yes. Yes. I mean, you look too young to be on, to have like 14 years. On I know. I started when I was young at 17. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very young. So yeah, so it, it's, it's, you don't feel good inside when you don't look, you know, when your skin is not healthy. You know, I don't have to wear a ton of makeup. I don't have to do any of that. If I have pretty skin, I put my hair in a ponytail, a little fake tanner, and I feel good. I feel good. But when you have this acne, I just, I, I don't, it definitely is like a self-esteem issue, I think, especially when you're younger. Now it's like, whatever, I have a pimple. I can, it, it's not going to take me down. But as, when you're younger, it's awful. It's awful. I know it's all you think about. And like we live in this society right now where it's so visual and everything's about perfection and filtered and photoshopped. And it's so hard when, you know, especially for young women, I should say just for anyone really that are growing up as teenagers and they're looking at this perfection, it's no wonder that it's impacting their mental health. Cause we, I think all three of us were lucky where we didn't grow up with social media staring us in the face every day. That is very true. I agree with that. And I, there's, I remember being forced to be on, on social media. I was doing a show, I was doing a morning show in Las Vegas. And, um, I mean, I had had my space and I was doing this morning show and they're like, you need to either blog or get on social media. I'm like, I'm not blogging. I don't even know what that is. And I'm not going to blog. And so they made me get a Facebook. I remember that. And I, I did not want to be on social media. I did not Mm -hmm. want to waste my time putting up pictures and putting up. Thank God I did. I have, because I grew my social media, I got Mm -hmm. jobs from it. Isn't that crazy? Like what a different world we live in now. It's crazy. I mean, like I got my biggest job was like, whoa, well, who has a bigger social media? 
following. What? I got a TV show. It was up me and another another radio host. I had the bigger social mm-hmm. media. I got the TV gig. Like which crazy. is crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. I know. We still remember a world where that wasn't the thing. And you being a radio show host, right? And I know your dad is, for anyone listening, very familiar with Casey Kasem. I used to like wait for Saturday when we got that syndicated here in Canada. Yeah. And it was my favorite show of the week. And Chris was like, oh my God, I also waited for that. Aww. And so, you know, growing up, we, the only type of, I guess you could say social media we had was the radio. That's where we grew up listening and getting all of this information. So I think it's just so interesting to look at the journey our society has taken in such a short time. Yeah, it has. It really has. And and I remember there weren't very many channels in radio or television. Mm -hmm. And like everybody watched the same thing, you know? Do you remember Mm -hmm. that? Like you would talk about it or you you were watching. I mean, for me growing up, it was like the A team or in living color, or yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It was like, and you all talked about it because everybody watched it that night. Now there's exactly. so much on. It's like, it's, it's so crazy. funny. It's very rare that everybody will, you have like the majority of people watching one thing mm-hmm. or listening and, to one thing. Exactly. And so for you, you know, being in the media, obviously you grew up in a media household as well. For you, have what have you noticed is really the biggest shift in, or some of the bigger shifts in our culture from, you know, you remember being growing up in your house to now where we are today. There's a lot, a lot, but I'm going to go with the food here because mm-hmm. of what I've seen, what's happening to our food and what's happening to our health. And we live in, you know, you're in Canada, but the United States of America, it's one of the wealthiest countries out there. We should have amazing health care. We should have amazing mm-hmm. food. We should not be lied to about what's being put in our bodies. And I know that my dad was one of the first vegans ever. Nobody know. I mean, no one knew what a vegan was. They called him a vegan all the time. What's a vegan? vegan. (laughs) I remember that like, um, Joaquin Phoenix, river Phoenix, that, that Mm -hmm. whole family, they were vegans. And I remember Mm -hmm. we would go to events with them and they were vegans and there, we, my, my dad never pushed it on us, but I became Mm -hmm. a vegan at 12. And uh, my brother and sister, my sister's a vegetarian. My brother was is not. Um, and I just remember the shift of when they started really doing, like things weren't organic. And now things are GMO, meaning genetically modified. And mm-hmm. why is that okay? Why is that okay to genetically modify our food where animals can't eat it, they get sick? Well, what's happening mm-hmm. to us? Look at our population full of sickness and mm-hmm. an autoimmune. Um, which when you're sick inside, you, most of the time you're going to see it on the outside in your skin. That's your biggest organ, right? So mm-hmm. I've watched the, the nation have a very low, um, percentage of obesity to an overwhelming amount of obesity and cancer and autoimmune disease and, and heart failure and heart attacks. And I'm just so much sickness now. And, mm-hmm. uh, I just think that People are waking up to it, but I don't know how I, that's, that's the scary thing. And it's, it's not a, it's, it's, it's not a, it's not a good, we haven't, we haven't transitioned into something healthier and better. We've transitioned Mm -hmm. into something worse. And that's, that's something I'm seeing. And I know I'm sure you guys talk about this on the show all the time is our food supply and what it's doing Mm -hmm. to our bodies and our skin. And that is the, I mean, I, it is, it is horrifying what Mm -hmm. companies you're looking at Pfizer making cheese products. Why is Pfizer making cheese products? Why is Pfizer making the, it's called the Renette or Renate, R-E-N-N-A-T that holds the cheese together? What? Mm -hmm. And and there's, we we don't have to talk about that. We don't like, there's nothing that they have to put on a package that part is insane by Pfizer that most of the the uh, food companies were bought out by pharmaceuticals. What's going on? Did we all just become best friends? Because <laughs> everything I you're know. talking about, I'm like, preach, preach, preach. I'm like, hello. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you so later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like, I, I it's it, to me, I just cannot believe this. And people just blindly trust because they don't mm-hmm. think um, that our, the FDA and the government's going to poison us. Think again. For me, you know, my journey into nutrition actually started with 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 beauty products. Is my mom bought me this book called "There's Lead in Your Lipstick" by Jillian Deacon. Yes. 
And it taught, and like I was my probably 18, 19, 20 at the time. And my, I love beauty hair. Like I had bottles of all of the, like the Mac, the top products that you like dozens and dozens, a six foot long table full of beauty products. And I remember thinking there is no way there's cancer causing ingredients in the products I'm putting on my body. And I remember sitting in my room, reading the labels of what you could see, because not everything needs to be on the label thinking, like I was enraged. I couldn't believe that these companies that I had trusted were putting known hormone disruptors, known cancer causing ingredients in the products I was applying to my body every single day for my entire life, like through my childhood, through my, my, my teenage years. And we can only imagine what that's doing internally when you're having this cocktail of chemicals living your body. So it's no wonder I ended up with an autoimmune disease like celiac. It's no wonder my immune system was depleted. It's no wonder all of these things happened. And it comes down to these manufacturers not caring about the ingredients they're putting in your products. Or doing it sinister, like it's just a sinister move to make you yeah. sick. If you're owned by the pharmaceuticals, and this is down the rabbit hole, and people may say, oh, it's not true, but I've done my research. You go down mm -hmm. the rabbit hole. If you're owned by pharmaceutical companies, and the, and the mm -hmm. big vitamin companies are now being owned by the people who own the pharmaceutical company, it goes way up. Um, and their business is sick people. And if you're sick, then you can use their medication. So it's just they keep you- It's a circle. You know, it, it's like a circle. It's a vicious circle. And you can, when you, when you buy ketchup here in America, you've got what, 20, 30 ingredients. When you mm -hmm. buy ketchup in Europe, you've got four or five ingredients. The, the high fructose corn syrup, the, the sugars that they put in everything. It's when I was, I was just in Norway and Sweden and, uh, and they don't put sugar in their I uh, almond milk or, or the uh, oat milk or, or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, the, the non-dairy. Non -dairy. Yeah. You have to ask for it here. I, I go to coffee places and I cannot, I am very hard to find anything that doesn't have sugar in it. And I mean, Dutch Don Brothers Dairy coffee. Milk. Yeah. Dutch Brothers mm -hmm. coffee. I'm going to call them out. Um, I love their coffee. There's not one creamer they have that doesn't have sugar in it. Not one. They couldn't even get me half and half. No mm -hmm. cream, no creamer that had no sugar. Now Starbucks is starting to do that. I can't find it. What well, I mean, most places will have unsweetened, but I've been there and it's like, no, I don't. Everything is, and I and I'm I'm off of Starbucks, by the way. I'm just not mm -hmm. gonna promote that at company. Yeah, it's it's amazing how much it infiltrates every area. And for you, you know, what really catapulted you into being so like reading the ingredients, being cautious of what you're putting on your body, what you're what you're eating, what really drove you into this type of lifestyle? Yeah, I got Lyme disease in 2007. And mm. I was I started to get a bit healthier prior, not where I'm at now. But um, then I got Lyme disease and I didn't know it. I was misdiagnosed. Oh, you have lupus, you have MS, you've got hormonal issues, you've got vitamin deficiencies. I mean, I w it was like celiacs. They tested me for celiac, everything. It was just like, I, I got much better when I got off of gluten. So I got off of gluten and all the inflammation, my, st my distended tummy went down. I felt better. I'm like, oh, maybe it was celiacs, but I tested and it wasn't, but I still stayed off the gluten. I got off the sugar. The soy products were giving me issues as well. So got off the soy products and I just started to go down the rabbit hole of, well, what the, what's good for you then? And then you hear people say, well, everything gives you cancer. Yeah, it does. Everything does give you cancer. And that is true. So let's mitigate it. You know, mm -hmm. and they're like, but people go, well, everything gives you cancer. It doesn't matter. No, it does matter because when you get older and it's not even now people are getting dementia and sickness and cancer a lot earlier. Why? Our food supply, our food supply, our food supply. That is what is happening to us. We used to have so many um, minerals and vitamins in our food, but now it's been over farmed. All the, the ground has a lot less of our needed vitamins and minerals. Now we're making GMO products that when you feed to animals, they get sick and it's okay to feed us. And there's, they've, you can't even digest most of it. So now we've taken out most of our, our, our vitamins. And this is, this is the biggest problem with that. When in, in times when you ate wheat, like ancient grains, it could sustain you. It had your vitamin E. It had your, you know, magnesium. It had the, the the vitamins it needed in it. Now it's got nothing except inflammatory ingredients. Like it's like making wheat now is so manufactured, mm -hmm. you can barely 
you, you can barely digest it. Uh, but back then it was. So what happened was with taking out the vitamins in our, and, and making genetically modified food is animals and bees and insects don't eat it. So now you don't have to spray so much pesticide. Well, if insects aren't eating it and animals aren't eating it. Then why are we? Then why are we eating it? Yeah. Why? Mm -hmm. Why? Why are we? Why is that being allowed? And people need to look into that. Mm -hmm. So if we do not have enough magnesium and we do not have enough calcium and we do not have enough vitamin E, our nervous system cannot function. And you're seeing all this anxiety and panic disorder and nervousness and all these, uh, you know, mental health issues come up and it can be as simple as giving your body the nutrition it needs and your body will function well. That simple. Carrie, do you need a job as a nutritionist? Because I feel like, <laughs> I feel like you'd be a perfect nutritionist. I, I tell this to people all the time because I went through it. I mean, I take magnesium mm -hmm. and changed my life. And there's oh. a book called The Magnesium Miracle. Everybody should mm -hmm. read it. You know that it's book? It's an amazing book. Yeah, yeah. love it. Everybody magnesium. should read it. Yeah. Like we, like I have magnesium almost as like my first aid kit because it can help with so many functions in the body and you're so spot on with the nutrient depletions. And for us in the clear skin solution with our clients, we run functional medicine testing. And one awesome. that we run is called a hair trace mineral analysis. This is looking at the levels of minerals in the body. And Chris, she's our, our HTMA guru. You see these mineral issues all of the time. Yeah, absolutely. Magnesium, I say, it's almost understated. We know as a society, we are vitamin D deficient, no matter where you live, like what's going on. I'm in the sun. I live in Cali, like, or I'm in Texas and they have sun way more than up in the great white North. Why are we all vitamin D deficient? Well, because of precursors, magnesium, but magnesium is not getting the limelight because in the blood lab test, when they test you, you come back deficient. Guess what? The basic test is you're dead. So you yeah. don't need it anyways. So please get the RBC magnesium and, you know, just, you know, magnesium, you can get it through so many foods. We're so big on foods, clean foods. And I'm kind of at the point now in my life where it's like, whether you want to be vegan, vegetarian, omnivore, pescatarian, whatever it is, guess what? There's corruption right through. So you're going to have to do what your body can digest. Maybe sometimes you have to work with what blood type you have, these types of things. It was interesting because last night I go to the store. I've decided to juice for 14 days at this nice. start. Mm -hmm. I'm like, listen, I'm going to elevate my protocol here. I'm just going to see what I can do. You know, <laughs> like I'm, I'm just, gonna, you know, I'm not drinking. I'm, no, I'm splashing on my face. No kidding. Um, but I'm, I'm juicing and I'm looking at stuff. And my husband, of course, curiosity, but also a little. Oh my gosh, here she goes. What are we going to do with her? You know, I've got cilantro and parsley and mm -hmm. cucumber and celery and all of these things. And I'm saying what it does. And he goes, okay, but will it make me feel better? I said, for you, it's probably going to make you feel a little bit worse. So we're going to start really nice and light. Mm -hmm. Now the whole family minus one child's on this juicing. I'm juicing like a bean in the morning. And like, I'm like, what's going on? But for me, it's how to get things like heavy metals out of the system, yes. how to kind of dislodge. And as I'm taking off the plastic, for the cucumbers, I'm like, you know what I was thinking today? Grocery shopping? I said, the appeal, appeal, whatever, you know, the Bill Gates invention. Yay, mm -hmm. Bill Gates. Um, I'm like, that thing just kind of came in and kind of disappeared in our grocery stores really, really quick. And I'm like, when do you ever see somebody with that much clout, that much influence, something, a product come in and out? It was like silenced. And I'm like, what's going on here? And it's not everywhere, but I'm noticing, Katie, I don't know if you go, when you go to the grocery store, look at it. I'm noticing it's not. It was coming on avocados. It was coming on cucumbers at high volumes. Uh, apples. Now it's kind of pulled back. And it was neat because I was like, with all the testing, I said, we as a society, we're becoming way more educated because the people like you, Carrie, that go and have that mass following, Katie, same thing, right? I'm like the I'm like the person behind that that does the stuff, so I don't have to worry about that. She's not an like, Instagrammer. She she I don't, does she prefers I don't like not to social, go on. Social, you know, because it's, it's again, it's just one of those toxic yeah. things. If I don't eat it in my life, I'm not going to sit here and juice and then be on social. But so I'm taking a one month detox from social media. Good. So, 
while I juice. <laughs> so, while she juices. <laughs> pray for me, everyone. Um, however, which I felt really, really cool because we do the HTMA and it's near and dear, obviously, to my heart, is it has petrochemicals, yeah. lead, arsenic, mercury. And that's not even all of them. And what does the FDA say? Oh, no, it's okay because you know what? A, a peel of a peel, 30,000 apples. That's what it's going to take for you to do just to get heavy, like one kg of apples. Heavy metals, everyone. They don't leave your system. They pool mm. depending on the heavy metals and the heavy metals. I'll tell you that are found in this product. They have to get metabolized by your liver before they're filtered through your kidneys. And if you have acne, both those organs are absolutely impaired or not working optimally. So please, 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 please always do your research, right? Do you think I like sucking back cilantro? No, I love it. Katie hates it. She's not going to be I'm not a cilantro fan. Oh, I Although love her cilantro. Sleep. It's so good for oh, heavy metals. It's oh, so good. I love it. And it's, it's so also good. good for collagen production because it's silicon oil in a roll. I mean, and I it helps it with that. Because aluminum, it's good Katie. for you. Not because I like it. I'm a cilantro hater, but I, oh, I, no. I, I even no, I know, smell but it. I take, I'll, I'll juice it, it so I can shoot it back, but that's it. Yeah. yeah. I'll do it for my health. Yeah. So I just Mm. wanted to let everybody know, really look at the comparisons and everything. Look who's doing it all. Like if we have, like you said, Carrie, I love this point. If we have corporations that are leading confectionery, so the sugar producers, the junk, I call it, my kids call it delish. I call it junk. Those foods, if those companies are buying supplement companies, and they also are interconnected with the pharmaceutical companies. We're missing something. Like I, I must, I got to put sh- my share somewhere else because obviously I'm doing something wrong here. I'm not getting rich doing what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. So that's just a small little thing. So it's not so much about us being on this like little bandwagon and we're like, oh my gosh, and conspiracy because you know that's what we get called. Or you know, the, it's when you do your research and you see something come into the grocery store and you see it leave, and I'm thinking. Well, how are they reformulating? If something does yeah. not break down a product and it's for longevity, how is your body breaking it down? Mm-hmm. So right. just food for thought for everybody. I just, you know, just think about it. We're here for a very, we should be here for a very long time. And that's even shortening. Now. That's right. Mm-hmm. We used to live a lot longer. I love how people say we live a lot longer nowadays. I said, you know, the people who live a lot longer, the people who are 90 and hundred, guess what? They ate organic food and didn't get vaccinated as a child. Mm -hmm. So look at that. I'm, I, you know, I'm not, an. uh, that's a whole nother podcast. That's that's like eight more podcasts. (laughs) That's a whole nother podcast. I was vaccine injured in 2007. So I, I was getting all my vaccines up until then. And then I got, I mean, so ill, so ill the day I took it. Mm. And the next day I tried to go into work and they literally sent me home. I never missed work ever. And, uh, and then I had to ha- call my producer and have him literally pick me up and take me to the hospital. And I was so sick. And that was the, that was the start of my Lyme disease. And I, mm-hmm. I actually interviewed a woman named Dr. Judy Mikovits, who, um, did a ton of research under Fauci on vaccinations. And when she found it was making people sick and she was going to publish her, um, papers that was, Literally, Fauci came in with guns, took all of her paperwork, put her in jail for one day, and that was seven, eight years ago, and she's never gotten her day in court because she can prove mm-hmm. what she was saying. But I got her on air. I got, I've interviewed her twice, and I said, look, I got really sick in 2007 when I took a tetanus shot. Really, really sick. And I swear that's where I got Lyme because I never got bitten by a tick. She goes, yeah, of course that's where you got Lyme. They put Lyme in vaccines. Yeah, education. Just education, right? Pro-choice of whatever, how we want to look at it. If we want to take a vaccine, educate, That's right? right. That's if right. we don't want to take it, it's because there's been some kind of education in there that said that's not suited for me. And there is, I mean, there's multiple cases of this for sure. 100%, yeah. right? The heavy metals. I mean, you're not the only one, you know, Kennedy yeah. is all for it. Um, so as everybody's listening, because I don't want them to be like, oh, but I did that. You know, it's not it, it's about okay. that. It, like, this is yeah. it, this is Carrie's story, right? right? So this is when you get vaccine injured, you know, it, it really gives that vigilance in you to to make no one else suffer to what you had to go through. Yeah. So 
Because getting Lyme is... Yeah, it's Lyme is the worst thing in the world. It destroyed me. It destroyed my body. It destroyed my brain. I My dad died of Lewy body dementia. My uncle uh, died last year with, uh, with Alzheimer's. My mm-hmm. um, granddad died with Alzheimer's. I have it in the family. When I couldn't remember stuff anymore or on air and I'm interviewing somebody live and I can't remember what I'm going to ask or anything about it. Or people are telling me, Oh, remember when? And I'm like, I don't. And I went through a year of thinking I had early onset Alzheimer's Mm. and it was, it was terrifying. And so that's when I, I said, I'm taking off work. I quit everything except one job and I, that was my journey. I'm, I'm going to get healthy. And I found like liquid oxygen baths from Hungary that I would lay in mm. for nine months. And then I found biomagnetism, which eventually, because Lyme hides in your brain and your spine, it hides everywhere. So you, you try and treat it somewhere with a frequency. And if it's not all over your body, they're going to run somewhere else. So I found a woman who does magnets from head to toe. Oh, amazing. Magnets are incredibly healing. Like for people that don't know about it. Unbelievable. I actually now opened a clinic with her type of magnets in Florida. But I I saw too many people lose all their money trying to get healthy, right? That's the thing is you're trying to get healthy. And like I also have Epstein-Barr. So for me, I've spent the last year. This will kill it. This will kill it. This type of magnet will kill it. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to get the info from you yeah, after because yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been going through a year of treatment. I've been doing IV ozone 10 pass and all of these different things. And I, I am feeling that. better. Yeah. I'm doing tons. But when you have chronic diseases like Lyme, like an Epstein bar, they impact every area of your life. Like for me, yeah. it, it, it turned into chronic pain and not being able to go out and do things because of yes. chronic pain is just horrendous. Yes. I am everything. I was so embarrassed. I just thought I was getting older. I would get up and I'd have to literally steady myself because my hips hurt so bad Mm -hmm. that, and I'm dating a guy 20 years younger than me. And I'm just like, this is, I look old. So I would stand up and just like sit, stand for a minute. And I remember when he started seeing me limp and he's like, are you okay? I'm like, oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. Just hip, hip issue, hip issue. And I'm just like severe pain in my hips. Right. Mm -hmm. And joint pain. And I was getting worse and worse. And my hair fell out three times during this. Um, mm-hmm. And it was just, there was from sexual dysfunction to my skin was super sensitive. I didn't want anybody touching me. I remember that. There were rashes everywhere. Um, my eyesight started to go and they were very dry. And it was, I was just like, there's so many symptoms. I did an entire podcast on Mm -hmm. all the symptoms I had with Lyme and all the different misdiagnoses, but I did the ozone. I did the so many vitamin treatments that you can't get a needle in my arm anymore. Same. I have collapsed art like veins because I've had so many IVs from IV treatments doing this. Yeah. Done with that. And And then the exhaustion, do you have the exhaustion? So bad. (laughs) Yep. That hit at three o'clock every day. So I could do coffee, coffee, coffee and get myself going till three. And then I wanted to be in bed. That was it. Yeah. Done. And and I find that everybody has a time where the exhaustion kicks in. It's very Mm -hmm. interesting with Epstein bar, with Lyme, whatever. It's like you have your time and you're done. And And unless you've dealt with this, you don't understand how draining it is. Cause it's almost like an, it's an invisible disease, right? No, everyone's like, Oh, well you look great. I'm like, well, thanks, but I don't feel great. Yes. Oh, you look fine. Yeah. It's like, I, I deal with so many people that doctors have told them there's nothing wrong with them. Or um, people tell them they look fine all the time and they just think they're going crazy. I'm like, you're not. Yeah. It's okay. We're going to fix this. Yeah. The blood labs are normal. You look yeah. fine. You're you just, yeah, you just have to live with it. It's part of being yeah. a woman. It's part of getting older, part of being a mom, part of, part of, part so of. So crazy. And they know Lyme is out there. They know yeah. it's there. They know for a while it was for years and years and years undetectable. And now they're finally, mm-hmm. they have, there's tests that can detect it. Yeah. Lyme, Epstein-Barr, all of these in, in infections, it's, they're so debilitating. And, and I think in when you've experienced being unwell, being sick, having a disease, having an illness, I'm sure people look at the three of us like, you guys, like you take it to the next level. You don't eat seed oils and you don't eat sugar and you don't eat gluten and you don't eat that. And you don't do this and you don't go and do that. And I think when you have been so sick that it debilitates every facet of your life, you will do anything to feel better and do anything to not go back to how you were previously yeah. feeling. Yeah, 
I want to touch on your cream here though, because yes, have you taken, I'm assuming like I have is you were sick and it's beautiful. Like I love the packaging, the design of it, the branding, it's so on point. And what really inspired this cream? Was it all of these health issues and all of these, I I know, I wish you could smell it. You guys, it smells like a creamsicle. What really did inspire you to want to create this cream and the ingredients that you used in it? It's, It's simple. I would give people for the last 20 years of my life, I would tell people, use this product for that, use this product for that, use this. I, and, and somebody goes, you're making everybody rich but yourself. Why don't you just do your own cream? And I'm like, that's a really good idea. But I just, and it took me years. And I finally said, you know, almost three years ago, let's do it. And I worked with somebody, Angie Chacon, who's a chemist and she's phenomenal. Um, and I wanted to do something that was healthy. You could basically eat it. I said, I want it so healthy that, you know, there's nothing, nothing in it that's on the list for, um, even reef safe, you know, so you can wear it in the Mm -hmm. water and it's not going to hurt the fish or the reef. And I'm like, absolutely. And I found a lab that won't allow any ingredient that is not 100% clean. Amazing. And so, yeah, there's only a few, few products she has in there and that's it. She won't. And if there's something in my, uh, in my cream or any any products that she does that g- gets on that list, can't manufacture there. You have to take it out. You have to find something different. Um, so I really, I, I love this. It's a stream to see is the lab mm. and Autumn Blum. And she's just so ethical and so good. And same with my chemist. She was like, you know, well, we can use this. And she would just go through all the different ingredients. And she's like, explain to me how things work together, how they don't, how some things could cancel things out. She also explained to me that there are ads that will tell you, hey, we've got this, we've got this, and this is what this does for your skin. And they'll use 0.001%. So it's Mm -hmm. in there and it's not regulated. So they can tell you this is, yes, that's what that ingredient does if you use it at a higher level, but they're not using it. So they'll tell you, we've got this ingredient and this does this. It's uh, been scientifically proven to, you know, reduce wrinkles and this and that, right? But you don't have anything in it. There's nothing in here. And they can actually, it's false advertising, but it's mm-hmm. legal right now. They're, they're regulating now, but I actually have percentages that work. In fact, it's so active. People have to use it every other day. And sometimes it can make you a little red, but um, it's for the face. It's for the neck. Uh, it's for the chest. I am making an eye cream. You can use this under your eyes, but um, I just wanted something that had all the stuff that I have used. So from the serums to the vitamin C, to the aloe, to, I mean, there's so much in here that is so moisturizing and so wonderful, but I use, there's one thing that I, that I have that nobody, that I have not seen anybody have in their creams. It's serotonin. I was so excited to see that in your, in your cream. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, let's hold on a minute. What made you want to put serotonin in it? Cause from our perspective, we know why. I was somebody who told me, look, you serotonin is going to be the next big thing. This guy was genius. He's like, you got to put serotonin. I'm like, why would I put serotonin in my cream? Well, this is what it's, it's looking to do. It plumps your skin and holds the moisture in. So Mm -hmm. people put it on. They're like, I know I might, this sounds crazy, but I feel like it worked like immediately. I'm like, it does. It plumps your skin immediately. It holds the moisture in and your skin's going to look better. And then over time, it is actually going to get tightened with enough uh, vitamin C. There's a, um, there's a brand, it's called Skin Tight. It's from uh, overseas and like in Sweden. And it is, it's got everything in there to make your face look and feel amazing. But after within three or three to six months, your skin will be tighter. And it's mm-hmm. amazing. So I, I'm just, I love my cream. I use it. My, my roommate uses it. I have my friends using it. This is like, it's perfect. It is like everybody watching on YouTube. And you don't need a ton. You That's don't need a ton. It's so concentrated. People. You've got like little dip, dip, dab. That's what I call it because there's yeah. no other words for it. And you're just massaging it in it. And I'm like, I put up like a little dot and I'm like, do, 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 do. And I'm like, do, 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 do. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We're, you know, let, let's keep going because water is not the first ingredient and we forget that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It's a beautiful That's cream. It's like, 
Uh, our esthetician looked at it actually. And she's like, this is basically a multivitamin for your face that has CoQ10 and MSM and serotonin and algae. Yeah. And I love that it's an all in one because so many people are like, I have three serums and then I put this on and then I put that on, yeah. but you went and put everything in one cream. Yes. So it I love that you know my ingredients. Steps. I love that. Yeah. The algae is part of the skin tight that, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that they, that they, I got from Europe and it is phenomenal. So yeah, it, it has, it has everything in it that, that can literally make your face and your skin look, feel, and be healthier. So I love it. thank you. And I just, I just won an award. I'm really happy about it. It's like top 25 <gasps> Tell us. Um, cream in, uh, it's called skin Arch skin anarchy. It's another mm -hmm. wonderful podcast. And she said the same thing. She's like, I love your cream. She's like, I used mm -hmm. it for two weeks. I don't even use products that much because I'm constantly trying, but she's like, I didn't want to get rid of your product. So yep. um, agreed. Yeah. I agree with her. Thank you so much, Carrie, for coming on for what we're going to do is we're going to put the link to your cream in the show notes. If anyone wants to go and check it out, I highly awesome. recommend super high quality all in one product. And for anyone that wants to follow you and kind of, you know, tag along on your journey here through life, where can they find you? You can find me on Instagram. That's really where I'm on Facebook, but not so much. Instagram is really where I'm just, yep really put my, if I'm going to put my time and energy into it, that's where I am. And I do answer myself all messages. So if you're, you know, DM me or whatever, I will answer you. Also for you guys, if uh, they put in the code pay 79, it will be $79. Otherwise it's 149. But for you guys and for anybody watching, it's pay 79. Yeah. Amazing. Carrie, thank you so much. Thanks. We're going to go add to cart. We're going to add 10 to cart <laughs> and so we're going to, we're going to apply it all over the body. So Carrie, I know you have to jet, but thank you so, so much for joining thank in and chatting both. with us today. We'd love to have you back again and we hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Thank you both so, so much. I really appreciate it and love what you guys are doing. And I love that you are getting out there and trying to help, help people. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for hanging out with us this week on the Clear Skin Chronicles. We'll see you next Wednesday with a brand new episode. Remember to subscribe to the show and drop us a review. Sending glowing vibes your way, Katie and Chris.